For the annual sessions, Shanghai Live will produce a special segment called City Chat, in which representatives of the city's international community share their opinions and suggestions about the key issues Shanghai faces. And today we have two environmentalists in our studio to talk about air pollution. And we have Peggy Liu. She is the chairwoman of the Joint U.S.-China Collaboration on Clean Energy. And we have Jason Int. He's the founder of Low House. Well, welcome to the show. As the member of the community, expert community, and also as environmentalists, what do you hear the most when your friends or say when the expert community talking about air pollution? Well, I think one of the most striking things about people who live here is, is that we're living like we're on Mars. We're trying to protect ourselves against the environment mm -hmm. versus really enjoying the environment. Mm -hmm. Of course, I think it should be one of the basic human rights of everybody that we should be able to enjoy the clean air and clean water. Jason, what's your opinion? Well, I've been living here since 2003, and what I've noticed is in the last couple of years, some of the most common things I hear are that, first of all, the pollution in Shanghai has actually gotten worse. And that's something you hear from a lot of people, and you can also see it in the air yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I hear a lot about is that people say that the pollution is much more top of mind right now. Mm -hmm. They may have noticed it before and not really thought about it, uh, whereas today a lot of people are actually doing something about it, or mm -hmm. at least becoming more aware, which is a, is a good thing. So how do you think air pollution has really affected the city? Do you actually have friends who's talking about um, moving or saying leaving the city of Shanghai because they have concerns um, for their health? Unfortunately, a lot of our friends have been leaving. And at first you're like, well, is this just a natural expat phenomena of people leaving after three years? But I do think that there are increasing number of people leaving because they don't see sort of a, a sort of pot of gold at the end of the tunnel or at the end of the rainbow. However, as an environmentalist carefully watching the policies and um, how much China is investing in trying to clean up the air, mm -hmm. I can say that they're doing more than any other country in previous history. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So if you look at the U.S., where Cuyahunga River was on fire mm -hmm. 13, year, 13 times mm -hmm. over 100 years, or London, they had the great smog over five days and 12,000 people died. Mm -hmm. You know, that's nothing new, but China, instead of trying to solve this over a couple hundred years, mm -hmm. has to solve this in less than 50. Mm -hmm. So I am fairly optimistic because I hear the government in Shanghai saying they want PM 2.5 to be reduced to 42 compared to 35, which is the maximum safe mm -hmm. level for China. But I agree with Peggy that the government is doing quite a lot already. China is actually a world leader in many clean technologies. It's the world's number one user of wind technology. Mm -hmm. It's almost the world's number one user of solar. But that's not enough. It's actually people who need to do more mm -hmm. to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to take action themselves rather than just dealing with the symptoms, they have to look at building in solutions. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that, for example, is that in your home, you know, air filters are great, but they really just deal with your own internal air yep. quality. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is think about your contribution to the problem of pollution by thinking about better transportation solutions. Mm -hmm. So we really need okay. to figure out a way of, first of all, reducing car use. Mm -hmm. So I agree that subway is one of the best ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Even walking is going to be a good way to reduce your carbon emission mm -hmm. because you don't need to have any vehicles at all. Mm -hmm. So reduce, reuse, recycle. And that's a mantra that I repeat to myself over and over again. You talked about we want to make a journey of maybe 50 years to solve the problem and to, to see the blue sky again. And maybe other countries, other developed countries used a few hundreds of years. But do you think it's possible um, to shorten that journey a bit, to, to, to meet our goal even faster? I do think that China is definitely on the path to having a very short time period where it's polluted. So again, Shanghai's target is to have 42 levels for PM 2.5 by 2020. That's only four years away. Mm -hmm. That's incredible mm -hmm. because I was thinking that it might take another 20 years, mm -hmm. right, to get to APEC blue skies on a normal basis. Now, of course, Shanghai is unusual. It is one of the top cities of China and the urban planners here are very smart. What I'm worried about are the cities in the north east near mm -hmm. Beijing, the ones with steel plants, the ones with cement plants, that they're shutting down the industry uh, by the dozens, right? And these are large companies. So what happens to all the people that were working in the cement plants and the steel plants mm -hmm. and the aluminum plants? We need to find new jobs 
to transition all of these people. So mm -hmm. this is probably one of the biggest challenges that China will ever face during its urbanization of, of 40 years. Mm -hmm. So construction dust is another one. So if you're uh, planning on buying and building a new house, think about how your construction is impacting pollution. Mm -hmm. Um, think about, if, if you really want to live the low house way, the way to begin to do that is think about zero waste. Mm -hmm. Every single thing you touch, try to think about how to have zero waste from the amount of energy and resources that it took to, to create that thing or service that you're using to what happens to it after you are done using it. How do you dispose of it? That's the beginning of a brand new way of sustainable lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And also we talked a lot about uh, the control targets and also the standards. Maybe the standards right now is the most debated topic of all. Do you think we have the toughest standards so far for China? Do you think there is uh, room for improvement? Well, it's been said for many years that actually China has some of the highest standards in the world. It just doesn't implement them or <laughs> you know, really enforce those standards mm -hmm, in many mm -hmm. cases. So I think it's the enforcement and the implementation that still has some work to be done. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to construction waste, uh, you know, I like to look at things like prefabricated structures, which are built in a factory mm -hmm. where the waste can be controlled, where the pollution can be controlled. They're transported to the building site and then put up in a minimum amount of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I live in downtown Shanghai where for the last three years there's been a huge construction site that's noisy, dusty, and even uh, the local residents have gotten fed up with it. At the same time, in Changsha, I've seen a company called Broad Sustainable Buildings mm -hmm. that's able to put up a large prefabricated structure within a matter of weeks instead of a ma matter of years. So they've found a way to reduce the construction waste, reduce the construction time, and make a more energy efficient building all at the same time. Mm -hmm. But they're being stopped from using these buildings in other places by local building codes, mm -hmm. by, um, by local governments that are afraid of building these uh, new types of structures, and somewhat by consumers who are uneducated about the benefits of that kind of construction. Mm -hmm. They're actually afraid of living in a prefabricated structure in some cases. So education, again, about the benefits of these types of uh, construction methods, as well as more um, subsidies or benefits for consumers to adopt those lifestyles, I think would be a step in the right direction for Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Peggy, what do you think? I think people have to remember that pollution isn't just PM 2.5. It comes from many, many different sources. Yes. So uh, for example, food waste. A mm -hmm. lot of people don't realize that in developed nations, 10% of greenhouse gas emissions actually comes from food waste alone. Mm -hmm. So every single time you're not finishing your food on your plate, then think about that turning into pollution in the air. So if you think about food in general, the food systems of making the food, growing it, bringing it to your table, eating it, it's the single largest source of greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm largely because a lot of the food that we eat is meat versus plant-based foods. And meat actually creates a lot of methane. Mm -hmm. Or gro uh, growing cows takes a lot of land to grow the grain for the cows to eat, mm -hmm. right? a lot more than the same amount of nutrition from plants. Mm -hmm. So every single time you eat meat, thinking, think about how that turns into pollution in mm -hmm. our air. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Peggy. And thank you, Jason, for joining us tonight.